unbeaten fighters and major performers. I can't tell you how excited I am about this. James Held at Eiffel TV, MTK Global. With me, I've got promoter Mick Hennessy. We're in Bolton today at the Macron Stadium for the announcement that Huey Fury will take on British champion Sam Sexton live on Channel 5. First, how are you, Mick? Very well, James. Good to be Good back, mate. It's been you. a little while since we caught up. Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? I'm still <coughs> around. Yeah, no, People can't get rid of me at the moment. I can see. Um, <laughs> exciting, firstly, to see you back on terrestrial TV with a heavyweight clash. There hasn't been a British Lonsdale heavyweight clash on, on terrestrial TV for seven years, I'm led to believe. So, good to be back and linking back up with Channel 5 and stuff. Definitely great to be back with Channel 5. As, as you mentioned, terrestrial TV is very, very important for the game. Yeah. It really is, and um, as you said as well, the last British heavyweight title fight on there, done record-breaking uh, viewing figures, 3.2 million back then. Indeed. So we got a we got an absolute brilliant British heavyweight title fight. Um, it's a crossroads fight. We got we got someone who's although he's 33, he's a vet, vet, veteran of the game. Um, great fighter. He's, he's he's having an Indian summer at the moment. He's really in great form. And in Huey Fury, Fury, we got someone who should be world champion. Mm. Now, you mentioned Huey Fury should be world champion. The last time I caught up with you personally was after that disappointing night for Huey against Joseph Parker, and in your opinion, not getting the decision he deserved. I spoke to Huey, I spoke to Peter. How did you personally pick yourself up after that, after that night, if you like, so to speak? It was mission impossible, really, because, you know, we felt like we'd well and truly been shafted. And, um, you know, to put everything we did into that world heavyweight title fight, to, to really go to the, the lengths we did to bring that fight to the UK under the circumstances, um, you know, it was a massive effort from all of us, from, from Hennessy Sports, from Peter, from Huey. It was a real, you know, it was a, it was, it was a real team effort. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did everything in our power to get that fight in the UK. And all we wanted was a fair shout. Um, we believed Huey could win that fight, and he did win the fight. And um, you know, we felt like we got shafted from a few different angles. But um, you know, that's boxing. We've we've had to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves down, and uh, you know, we, we won't be beaten with this. We'll we'll get through somehow. Since the fight with Huey Fury, we saw Joseph Parker lose his WBO title to Anthony Joshua. Um, points lost to Joshua. Joshua winning the winning the fight, mostly controlling with a jab. Was was that sort of something that you you sort of see a, a distinct similarity between Joshua's performance and Huey's performance? I thought it was very strange. Yeah, I mean he he, he boxed Anthony. He won the fight uh, with his jab. It wasn't an exciting fight. Um, I, I think the referee for me was shocking. I think it might have been a different fight if Joseph Parker was allowed to fight on the inside. Um, but, as you said, Anthony won it with a jab. Um, I personally think Huey landed, landed better jabs than Anthony did throughout the fight. Um, much better jabs. So, you know, for us, and for me, although Anthony was throwing shots and throwing right hands and stuff, he weren't connecting much. Whereas I think Huey actually, although he got criticism for not throwing many right hands, I think he landed more clean right hands than Anthony did and landed more uppercuts. So, you know, it's, it's one of them. It's, it, we're in a situation, you know, whatever, whatever he does, mm. he's going to get criticised until we prove people wrong and he becomes world champion. He does it in style. Now, taking that opportunity to face Joseph Parker for the WO title, in, in doing that, he sort of missed out the British and European traditional routes. Yes. Do you think it's important now that he, he wins that British title and gets that, that, that experience at British European level before looking to, to regroup and re-challenge for world honours? I do, I think it's very important. He, um, he's shown that he's truly world class. I mean, you know, most people thought he won that fight and should have been WBO World Heavyweight Champion that night. So he's shown he's truly world class. And he'd only just turned 23. That's very, very young for a heavyweight. It's a baby in heavyweight terms. So he showed that. What we're doing here is, as you say, he skipped domestic level. Yeah. Pete has been working on some great things with him. To, you know, more strings to his bow, to, to make him a more complete fighter. So we brought him to the, back down to domestic level and he's going he's gonna to have a few fights and he's going to be able to practice things he's been, he's been working on. And, you know, don't get me wrong, Sam Sexton is, is, is a quality heavyweight. He's a dangerous heavyweight. He's a big heavyweight. 
and he wants this. I can, I've, I've known Sam, Sam a long time. And he, as I said earlier, he's having an Indian summer in his career and you can see he's enjoying it. Mm. So he's a dangerous heavyweight. But I think, I think Huey is a truly world-class heavyweight who once he becomes heavyweight champ, he'll hold on to it for a long time. We know a belt can improve a fighter and add 10% to a fighter. Do you think that is the case with Sexton? And is there a risk with him being 10 years older than Huey that he could potentially old man Huey off in the fight? He's got a hell of a lot of experience. Of course, there's always potential for that. Hell of a lot of experience. And, he's, and you know, although he's been around, like he said earlier at the press conference, he's been around a long time. He's still only 33. You know, most people in heavyweight terms consider that to be the prime of, of, of heavyweight boxing. So, you know, no one's underestimating Sam. He's a dangerous fighter. It's going to be a really good fight. Um, he's, he, he's, he's also got a very good trainer in his corner. Um, in Graham Everett, knows the game inside out. Like they said, been together 20 years. This is, you know, you, you've got two old school fighters going up against each other, and you've got two old school top trainers going up against each other with in their fighters. Peter Fury and Graham Everett, that's a yeah, very good point. They're, they're, they're very, very point. like, very unassuming people. They don't mm. get the credit they deserve. That's a good point. And, um, you know, for me, Peter Fury is truly world class. What he did back in Dusseldorf, you know, what, what he added to that and what he brought out um, was something that no one should ever forget. It was, it, it was special what he did um, back then. And, you know, as I say, this is, this is a quality fight from, from top to bottom. Uh, and, and, and it's old school British title. It really is making something of the British heavyweight title, which, you know, years ago it was, it was held on a, a massive pedestal. And sometimes, you know, with different TV networks, you, you you lose you lose touch with that. But now it's on terrestrial TV. Hopefully, we can we can get it back there. May the twelfth on terrestrial TV on Channel Five. Sam Sexton defending his British title against Huey Fury. Great fight. Tickets available via the Hennessy Sports website. And and Bolton White. And Bolton White. Bolton White Stadium. Yeah. Macken Stadium. Yeah. Hennessy, great to have you back. Anything you want to add? Anything you want to say before we disappear? Just want to say I'm really looking forward to Savannah Marshall's UK debut. Really, am looking forward to it. I've been watching her for a few months in the gym. I've been seeing what Peter Fury's been doing with her, even before she went out and fought on the Mayweather card. The changes he made to her, I was very impressed with her debut. Very impressed, impressed with the changes Peter made. And for me, she's got the potential to be the best woman fighter in the world, pound for pound, because. Not only has she got great boxing ability and she's got that, you know, a former world champion with a great win over Clarissa Shields, yeah. but for me, she's the best women, woman puncher in the world. She, you, you know, she, she is so heavy-handed. And I think that's one of the things sometimes that's missing in women's boxing. Shade, shades of Ali? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to say shades of anyone because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That'll get me into the uh, into deep water again. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, big puncher, uh, got great boxing ability. That win over Clarissa Shields, no one else has beat her before. Mm, so. um, you know, that's a fight that's destined to happen in the future. I'd, I'd say, you know, really watch this girl. Cause Clarissa some... Shields is a scary prospect as well, isn't she? She is. To hold a win over her, as, as Savannah Marshall does, it shows the calibre and level she she can box out and has boxed that. Shows the calibre and level, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the only way you do that with someone like Clarissa Shields is if, you, is if you're heavy-handed. And um, she is, since Peter's tweaked her as well, she's punching harder than ever. Uh, you know, when you, when you watch her in the gym and you listen to her, they're like thuds, her shots. Real heavy-handed, but I'm, I'm excited to see her debut. Right, so Mick Hennessy, great to get you back on IFL TV. Thank you for giving me some of your time today, sir. And we look forward to catching you in the build-up for this British title clash. Thank you. Thanks, James. Cheers. Three rounds, three minutes, three fights. Unbeaten fighters and major performers. I can't tell you how excited I am about this.